Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the channel. This is in continuation of uh, oropharyngeal tumors. Its part one is already recorded, and the link for that video is there in the description. So you are requested to check that link before going through this video. Today we will talk about the treatment of oropharyngeal tumors. And uh, in the part one, we just discussed the pathophysiology, etiological factors, clinical symptoms, incidence of lymph node metastasis and distant metastasis and PNM staging for oropharyngeal carcinomas. You are requested to like and uh, subscribe the channel and share it with your uh, friends so that uh, they can also get benefit of uh, these videos. Uh, the treatment option, just like anywhere in the body, any malignancy, it depends upon the site and stage of the malignancy, then a patient's journal health, then keeping the patient's ability to speak and swallow as normal as possible after treatment, and of course the facilities and expertise available. That is very important. The treatment options for any malignancy, we have got surgery, radiotherapy, surgery plus pre or post-op radiotherapy are a combination of these that is surgery uh, with chemotherapy plus radiation or chemo radiation and then in very advanced tumors where there is as we saw in stage 4b in case of oropharyngeal carcinomas that tumor is local local regional is so much advanced that it is unresectable so there we have got no option left except palliative treatment so we have to you know uh, plan a treatment strategy for individual patient according to his you know uh, status, general health status. For example, uh, surgery may be a good option for one tumor, but your patient, for example, is not fit for uh, surgery, surgical trauma uh, due to ill health or associated diseases like diabetes or renal uh, problems or uh, this liver problems. So that we have to think about the second option uh, accordingly. So. The treatment plan will be for individual patients depending upon the site and size of the tumor, general health status and then of course the expertise available. Early stage tumors, uh, they are usually well controlled with a single local modality that is either radiotherapy or surgery and stage 1 and stage 2 tumors, they are considered as early stage tumor in general I am talking about. Then stage 3 and 4 uh, which are not metastasized yet. Those are called as loco regionally advanced diseases and for loco, loco regional advanced diseases two appropriate treatment strategies are used either surgery followed by radiation with or without chemotherapy and uh, second option in this case in advanced tumors is that radiotherapy usually given with chemotherapy. Objectives of our treatment for any malignancy is control of primary tumor and the regional lymph nodes, preservation of the anatomy and function of the organ as much as possible and minimal treatment sequelae that not only the uh, disease itself will ha be having morbidity and mortality but uh, due to the treatment and outcome of the treatment, the complications and the sequelae of the treatment may, you know, disturb the routine quality of life of the patient. So we have to keep in consideration the minimal treatment sequelae. Treatment modalities, as I just mentioned, surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy are combined modalities can be there. Now the surgery for the primary tumor and if neck lymph nodes are there, 
the surgery for those lymph nodes as well accordingly that whether it will be a selective neck dissection or modified radical neck dissection or radical neck dissection depending upon the stage of nodal involvement. Uh, this radiation a radiotherapy it can be external beam radiation which can be conventional external beam radiation and nowadays advancement is there and uh, 3D uh, this CRT can be used or brachytherapy depending upon again the staging of the tumor. The radiotherapy it is used as definitive treatment in both early as well as late stage diseases because the cure rate is high, functional outcome is better and there is lesser morbidity. Standard dose is 200 centigrade with 5 fractions per week and dose to the primary tumor and palpable lymph nodes it ranges from 65 to 74 gray in 6.5 to 7.5 weeks depending upon the tumor stage. This is in journal. For elective irradiation of subclinical microscopic lymphatic metastasis that should be at least 50 gray and after 40 to 45 gray spinal cord shielded along the vertebral body is very important. When we have to think about post-operative radiation that surgery has been done for primary tumor but on histopathology the specimen is showing inadequate or positive margins it means that whole disease has not been excised that is an indication for post-op radiation larger lesions or advanced stage stage 3 or stage 4 tumors t3 or t4 tumors they have been excised but still there may be chance there are chances of microscopic involvement of the surrounding tissues so post op radiation should be considered in poorly differentiated lesions on histopathological classification perineural spread if it is there lymphovascular invasions soft tissue extension desmoplastic stromal invasion and multiple lymph nodes involvement all these are the indications for post-operative radiation. The side effects of radiation in general, you will read it again and again with the reference to anywhere where you have to go for radiation. So acute toxicity may lead to mucositis, dermatitis, dysphagia, sore throat, dinophagia, alopecia, xerostomia, taste disturbance, dehydration and compromised nutrition and later on there can be xerostomia, which may be permanent, dental caries, osteoradionecrosis can be there, prolonged dysphagia, trismus, hypothyroidism, especially in the region of the neck, cervical fibrosis, neck lymphedema, and even hearing loss due to the eustachial tube dysfunction, especially if irradiation is there in the region of oropharynx or nasopharynx. As the surgery is concerned, surgery has got a limited role in carcinoma of the oropharynx because this oropharynx surgically it is inaccessible, whole excision of the tumor sometimes it becomes difficult, increased post-operative and functional morbidities are there relating with the swallowing and speech. But the indications of other surgery are as, it, as definitive tumor for small lesions like T1 or T2 as a part of combined approach for advanced stage tumors with radiotherapy of course. For residual disease in the neck even after radiotherapy as a salvage for the persistent or recurrent disease. The advantage of surgery is that it is one time procedure though most of the patients they will require post-op radiation. Limited amount of the tissue is exposed to treatment. Late sequelae are minimal and radiotherapy is reserved for subsequent recurrence of the tumor or any tumor which may be unsuitable for surgery. Disadvantages are of course there will be cosmetic defects, there will be functional defects, greater amount of disability is expected than Complex reconstructive procedures are required for the rehabilitation of the functional, you know, outcomes and cosmetic defects. Then expertise is required, which is usually not available everywhere. Now, the surgical procedures, a 
according to the different subsites of the oropharynx. For example, base of the tongue, uh, we can opt for midline mandibulotomy, that is splitting the lip and the mandible in the midline, then oral tongue in the midline to be split. Lateral mandibulotomy from the lateral side, mandibulotomy, dividing the mandible near the angle and approaching the base of the tongue from the side and floor drop procedure. So these are different surgical approaches for base of the tongue and the approach which we have to use will depend upon the site and size of the tumor at the time of presentation and of course the patient's uh, journal health and the outcome with the reference to uh, functional outcome I mean a patient's uh, consent is must. As far as tonsils are concerned, if tumor is less than 1 cm, wide local excision is quite feasible. But if tumor is involving the palatine tonsils, then radical tonsillectomy we have to think about. In soft palate, surgery is rarely recommended as initial therapy because of significant nasopharyngeal reflux during uh, swallowing. Nowadays, transoral laser surgery is also available. I will not go into that much detail of all this. I just mentioned it so that you can have an idea. Complications include post-operative hemorrhage in is on only 5 to 10 percent of the cases. Positive margin rates are variable and they appear to vary based on primary site being more common in base of the tongue tumors. So, transoral laser surgery. Now, uh, this, this robotic surgery is in vogue. So, transoral robotic surgery can also be used for surgery of uh, oropharyngeal carcinomas. In positive neck nodes, that is uh, metastasis is present. If it is N0, the selective neck dissection at least from level 2 to 4 because in part 1 we saw that the first echelon of the lymph nodes which are involved in oropharyngeal carcinomas is level 2, then level 3 and level 4. So selective neck dissection in N0, in N1 or N2A to C, the selective or you can go for modified radical neck dissection and in N3 of course we have to think about modified radical or radical neck dissection. So Conclusion is that primary radiotherapy is a preferred treatment in early stage tumors. Altered fractionation schedules produce better results but with increased toxicity of course. And surgery is preferred in cases of residual or recurrent disease. There is no improvement in low recurrence or survival for patients treated with surgery plus radiotherapy as compared to radiotherapy alone. So that's why radiotherapy is considered as a number one treatment. Brachytherapy plays a limited role because of technical difficulty due to anatomical location. Concurrent chemo radiation, CCRT, is the treatment of choice for loco regionally advanced tumors. Now, very briefly, according to the subsites of the oropharynx, till now what we have dis discussed, we discussed oropharyngeal carcinomas in general. So, specifically, according to the subsite, we will talk about uh, very quickly, very few major points I will just talk about. Otherwise, the general protocol will remain the same. So, if base of the tongue that is the posterior one third of the tongue. If it is involved, uh, how it will present and uh, what will be the signs and symptoms. Usually, it uh, remains in the tongue unless it begins at peripheral margins. It may invade the glossotonsillar sulcus and eventually escape to the neck. Advanced lesions, they spread to the larynx, oral tongue and parapharyngeal space commonly seen in our country. Patients usually presents with enlarged neck nodes. We have seen, if you remember, I showed you in part one, uh, the neck nodes presentation at the time of uh, presentation of the disease. In Even in T1 of the tongue ba base of the tongue tumor, very initial tumor, tumor primary tumor, still 70% of the patients at T1 stage of the base of the tongue carcinoma will be having 
neck lymph node metastasis so main presentation may be a lump neck earlier symptoms in addition to lump neck there can be sore throat feeling of lump in throat discomfort on swallowing late features will include rhabdomyalgia dysphagia bleeding from the mouth change in quality of speech which will be hot potato voice spread can be locally it locally it can spread to the tongue musculature epiglottis pre epiglottic space tonsils facial pillars hypopharynx lymphatic spread as i just mentioned 70% of the cases show cervical lymph node metastasis which is either unilateral or bilateral at the time of initial consultation because base of the tongue is a midline structure so there is possibility of bilateral jugulodigastric lymph nodes are the first one to be involved distant metastasis to the bones liver lungs may be involved so here if you can appreciate at the tongue base this is an exophytic growth at the tongue base so diagnosis just general that work up we have to do that we just uh, talked about in uh, part 1 bobsy will confirm the diagnosis and then treatment will be radio sensitive tumors such as lymphoepithelioma they are treated by radiotherapy to the primary and the neck nodes and t1 t2 squamous cell carcinomas with n0 or n1 neck surgical excision with block dissection with post operative radiotherapy can be considered in t3 and t4 of course we have to go for surgical excision with the mandibular resection neck dissection and post operative radiation and t4 lesions with extension to anterior tongue and the vellicula it will include the extensive surgery which is total glossectomy and laryngectomy in addition to the block dissection which may be radical neck dissection if the carcinoma is involving the lateral wall that is of the oropharynx which includes the tonsils and tonsillar fossa again the squamous cell carcinoma is the most common though lymphomas also occur there and 90% of the lymphomas in oropharyngeal uh, tumors they involve the tonsils so squamous cell carcinoma will present as an ulcerated lesion with a necrotic base and lymphomas they presents as unilateral tonsillar enlargement and may mimic quinzy so initial lesions they tend to be exophytic with central ulcerative ulceration with infiltrative margins some develop submucosally neck nodes with no obvious tonsillar lesions and advanced lesions they can penetrate to the parapharyngeal space or skull base or they can involve the mandible nasopharynx and even piriform fossa so this is the carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma and this is the lymphoma you can see here the mucosa is smooth so spread can be locally it may spread to soft palate pillars base of the tongue pharyngeal wall hypopharynx parapharyngeal space mandible pterygoid muscles in 50% of the patients they may have initial cervical lymph node involvement at the time of presentation and again the jugulodigastric lymph nodes are the first one to be involved distant metastasis in advanced disease will be seen persistent throat pain dysphagia earache neck swelling and trismus and bad odor from the mouth that is fetal oris again the diagnostic work up will be the same as we mentioned in uh, part 1 of oropharyngeal carcinomas treatment will be radiotherapy or surgery that is the excision of the tonsils in early lesions and commando operation for larger lesions and then we have to consider about the combined therapy in advanced disease what is commando operation commando operation is combined oro mandibular resection with reconstruction it involves wide surgical excision of the primary tumor with hemi mandibulectomy and radical neck dissection along with its reconstruction that's what we call as commando operation this is implicated for advanced diseases of the tonsillar carcinoma so palatine arch is nothing but soft palate uvula and anterior pillars and the early tumors here they will present with red lesions with ill defined border and squamous cell carcinoma of course is the most common spread occurs first to the tonsillar pillar and hard palate and lateral spread may penetrate superior constrictor muscle and the skull base and may rarely expand to cr cr cranial nerves in the parapharyngeal space 
involvement of the lateral wall of the nasopharynx in advanced cases and patients presents with persistent throat pain local pain earache and the treatment is irradiation or surgery carcinoma of the posterior and lateral pharyngeal wall the lesions they remain asymptomatic for long time they may spread submucosally to adjoining areas such as tonsils soft palate tongue nasopharynx and hypopharynx they may also involve the parapharyngeal space and anterior spinal ligaments bilateral lymph node involvement is common because again the posterior pharyngeal wall is a midline structure just like the base of the tongue so bilateral lymph node involvement is quite common and treatment is again irradiation or surgery then i just mentioned here the parapharyngeal tumors they can present as a mass in the oropharynx actually the tumor is present there in the uh, parapharyngeal space but they may present as a mass in the oropharynx otherwise parapharyngeal tumors we will cover them in a separate video inshallah very soon so deep lobe of the uh, parotid its tumors then neurogenic tumors like neurolamomas then chemodectomas that is carotid body tumor glomus vagal and lipoma can occur and may present in the oropharynx the prognosis that is the chance of recovery it depends on the followings that is the stage of the carcinoma as early the diagnosis is prognosis is good advanced disease is there at the time of pre presentation stage 3 or stage 4 of course the prognosis is poor not only just because of the disease itself but the treatment modality which we will adopt for the treatment of or for try to cure the disease it uh, this treatment in itself will have the morbidity morbid mortality and the sequelae then the number and the size of uh, lymph nodes with the carcinoma at the time of uh, presentation whether the patient has a history of uh, smoking for more than 10 years and oropharyngeal tumors uh, related to hpv that is human papilloma virus infections they have a better prognosis as compared to those tumors which are not linked to hpv infection and recurrence rate is also less in those patients who are having a tumor linked with hpv as compared to the those tumors which are not linked with hpv so oropharyngeal carcinomas they constitute 10 to 12% of all head and neck carcinomas of course squamous cell carcinoma is the most common pathology hpv is the most common risk factor associated with oropharyngeal uh, carcinoma and concurrent chemo radiotherapy is main stay of treatment especially in advanced cases so with that we come to the end of uh, today's discussion you are requested to like and share the channel with your friends and don't forget to subscribe the channel thanks for watching